How many times have you stolen buses or trains? Well, I can tell you this. I've done way more trains than I have done buses. I saw a figure like 500 trains. 500? That was probably my first three years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm way off then. <laughs> yeah. For nearly all his life, 52-year-old Darius McCollum has had an obsession with public transport, in particular, New York's Metropolitan Transit Authority. Are you able to explain what it was about trains and buses? It was basically the whole atmosphere, more than anything else. It wasn't just one specific thing. So the, the sounds, the smells? Yes. I, it's like, sometimes I feel as if I can just run the whole MTA by myself and <laughs> because I, I've done so much. In New York City, Darius is an infamous felon. The gentleman thief who's always making headlines. He's been arrested 32 times for stealing trains and buses and impersonating a transit employee. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of the public transport system. But despite being constantly jailed, Darius just can't stop. Is it a passion or is it an addiction? A little bit of both. Can you differentiate the two? Okay, passion meaning that I still love the system. I, I will never stop loving the system, just like I love New York. Um, the addiction part comes where I still want to be there and I still want to wear the uniform. I still like the look. I still like the image. And that's the part that I can't seem to stop on my own. So is he a criminal? No. He 1,000% not a criminal. They all know about Darius. It's very cute. Sally Butler is yeah. Darius's longtime lawyer. Darius. This is Darius's last case, Darius's psychiatric. And Darius's she admits medical. she's and never had a client case. quite like Darius. This is Darius, this is Darius, this is all Darius. But Sally believes authorities have never understood Darius, right back to when he was first arrested at just 15. The first time he was arrested, he was filling in for a man who had a mistress. Correct. How is that? not taken into account. It's, it's, it is not, and I always say to them, you know, how do you think he learned how to drive these trains? How do you think he learned how to drive the buses? It's not like, you know, he, he's just figured this out on his own. Someone taught him. I mean, this, you, this is, you, you, you have raised this person. Now you don't like what you raised. It started when Darius was a young boy. He was bullied at school, and then when he was horrifically stabbed by another student, he began skipping classes. He took refuge in the subway, and it became the place where he felt safe and accepted. Workers there took a shine to him. They gave him a uniform and eventually taught him to drive the trains, even sometimes asking him to cover for them. It just came a second home to you. It became a place you felt safe. Yes, it did. Um, it became my sanctuary. I spent so much time there, and I just preferred being down there more than any place else. Indeed, I think the, the staff almost adopted you. The staff definitely did adopt me. They trusted me. They knew I knew the system. They was like, you know more than I do, so they allowed me to do things that I wasn't supposed to do. Every time Darius was released from prison, security alerts were posted in bus and train stations. But it didn't stop him. If you notice, the bus is sitting here and unoccupied. So I can just go open the door, start the bus up, and, and pull on out with the bus. Nobody would suspect anything, because they probably think I'm just one of the drivers. You would be in a bus depot where a bus driver was nowhere to be seen, and you just took control and drove it out. If I knew a bus was going to break down and they reported to the depot, I tried to help, I tried to go and cover. So you, you, you felt you were offering a service as a backup? Right. 
Do you, do you realize that is slightly ridiculous? Darius? I know it's slightly like ridiculous, <laughs> but that's just something I felt compelled to do. He said that he was on his way to return the bus after driving to John F. Kennedy International. The potential risk of an unlicensed driver behind the wheel of a 35,000 pound bus. Media coverage of Darius's crimes has made him a folk hero. He says he's plagued by an unyielding desire to drive public trains and buses. He's been the subject of a documentary and his story is now about to become a Hollywood movie. Do you think Darius does get something from the media, from the public, yes. the attention? Oh, I do. Is I that, think he does. Is that playing into his behaviour at all? Has that encouraged his behaviour yes. at all? Yes. How's that? Yes. Quite honestly, I, I found it to be somewhat interesting because he has such, um, you know, he has so few friends and relatives that many of the people in the media um, that speak to him, he is so happy to have just a friendly person that comes and speaks with him and is not going to judge him in a negative way. Did you tell police you were going to steal Where were you planning to take the bus? But it's not just about public attention. Only in his latter life has Darius been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a disorder that drives his intense and obscure interest. It is sad because when you look at Darius's story, you can't help but think it didn't have to be. I, I think, first of all, the fact that Darius is black and grew up at a time where I think a lot of children who were African-American fell through the cracks in the school system. The other issue is he grew up at a time when we didn't know about this disorder. You know, he's a prolific letter writer, I know that. He is, he writes beautifully. Autism expert Laurie Sherry worked with Darius for five years, trying to help him break the cycle of his compulsive Gosh. behavior. And the interesting thing is that he can articulate his condition and what it means, but he can't stop it. That is the problem. He has what a lot of people with Asperger's have, which is self-awareness. He is, he's bright. And so he understands, he knows he has a problem. He knows what the problem is. He also knows he can't fix the problem. The result is that Darius has now spent half his adult life in prison. And our interview took place in a Brooklyn jail, where he's awaiting trial for yet another theft. Darius took the wheel of this empty Greyhound bus and drove it out of a Manhattan terminal. You did it because you couldn't help it? Yes. And what did you think you were going to do with the Greyhound bus? Actually, I was planning to bring it back like I normally do. Take, but... take it out on its service and bring it back? Right. He is the most cautious, you know, a perfect driver, a courteous driver, and the whole time he's just as happy as can be. The truth is, uh, you know, that's where he belongs. He belongs making the system better. He really does, and he could. If he hadn't had this criminal record, if this hadn't happened to him, I'm imagining he would have been the ideal employee. I absolutely agree with you because he's a rule follower. He is very concerned about um, the passengers and their safety. He, I mean, he truly is. He's extremely knowledgeable and He's reliable. But Darius's future now looks grim. Authorities believe because he continues stealing, he shouldn't be released. And unless Sally Butler can secure a deal with the prosecutors, Darius is facing life in jail. A heavy price for a fixation that has already cost him so much. You got married. Yes, I did. And that didn't work out because you yeah. loved trains more. I liked the trains more. She thought at one stage you were having an affair because you're away so often. <laughs> yes, she did. But I wasn't. My affair was basically with the subway system or anything else. 
Doris, your life has been, been spent more in prison than with, in freedom. How do you feel about that? Uh, I have to adjust to it. Um, I don't know how long I have to adjust to it, but I have to adjust to it. You've been attacked in jail? Yes. And you tried to commit suicide? When a situation happened and I was attacked in jail, the next option is to either continue getting beat up or try to get somebody who can help me get out of it. Did you really want to die? No. But I didn't want to continue being beat up either. Has it stopped? Yes. They'd rather lock him up and put him in a cage than deal with the fact that, you know, here we have somebody that, that needs help, could be functioning, doing wonderful things, um, but it's just easier to put him in the cage. Uh, there's just simply no room for anyone that's unusual. If you can't fit into their box, they put you in a box. Would having a job with the transport system, which didn't include driving a bus or a train, satisfy you? Actually, yes. Satisfy that urge? Yes. Could you be guaranteed not to step beyond that? You know why I can be guaranteed not to step behind that? Because I'm still part of the system. Darius McCollum's story is one that could change the rule book, but it probably won't. He's stuck in a judicial system that doesn't seem to have any answers and leaves Darius with few options but to sit in a cell and hope that something changes. Maybe the greatest uh, sadness of all is that that little boy fantasy you've never been able to fulfill. Right. If only you had been able to do it the right way. Mm hmm Do you think about that? I think about that all the time. And that's another thing people have said to me. It says that apparently I've accomplished my dream of doing what I've always wanted to do. You paid a terrible price. Uh, paid a whole lot of terrible prices, yes, behind it. It is a lesson to us all about what do we do with somebody like Darius? <laughs> yeah, what do I do? Not only what do we do with Darius, but what does Darius do with Darius? Yeah. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.